Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Yankees Mania. I am your host, Gavin Primavera. It is a very cool, dreary day here in New York, and I just want to wish everyone out there a very happy new year, and hopefully the Yankees can win a championship and bring it home in 2022. Now, again, just to start it off, really no more updates on what's been going on after the lockout. Hopefully, now that the new year is here, that both sides can come to an agreement so we can finally start the baseball season and hopefully conclude this free agency process. But that being said, we have heard nothing of the sort, and we will let you know when that happens. Okay, so again, now again, not really that many topics to talk about. However, one story that did come out over the past week was a potential Matt Chapman to the Yankees deal. And one thing that was very interesting about this to me, I found, was that Matt Chapman is a third baseman for the Oakland A's, but apparently the Yankees were looking into playing shortstop, or looking into Chapman, whether or not he can be a potential shortstop option for them. I mean, look, I don't really know how I feel about this. If he can play shortstop and the Yankees think that he can, then I'd have no issue with that. And I'm assuming if they were to do this, this could be a potential package deal where it would be an Olsen and Chapman to New York, which I think would be a great trade for the Yankees, depending on how much you give up. But again, is that really realistic? My guess is probably not. But And also, honestly, the Yankees think he can play shortstop. The Yankees thought Torres could play shortstop, and we all know how that turned out. So again, my thing is, that's really all that's been going on, and that was just a potential story out there, just a rumor, just to try and maybe keep people interested, because really not much has been talked about in baseball here in the New York sports media over the last month or so, ever since the lockout, because there's really nothing to talk about. But one thing that can be talked about that I will certainly get to right now, and it's that time of year for the 2022 Baseball Hall of Fame ballot. Now, if anyone who knows me knows, I have a lot of problems with the 2022, with the um, Hall of Fame process in general, mostly because I think it's a lot of, again, I'm not saying all of them, because I think there's a lot of respected baseball writers out there who know a lot about what they're doing, but there's certainly a lot of, I think, old geezers out there who don't have a clue what they're doing, and definitely should not be voting for the Hall of Fame. So... Um, I think in a lot of this, you can see this with the steroid users. Um, you're going to basically hold back an entire generation of some of the greatest baseball players of all time. Some would argue one of the greatest eras in baseball history just because they did steroids. Now, again, just because you're not just because you're not in the Hall of Fame or just because you're in the Hall of Fame for doing steroids does not, in essence, mean that it's not being held against you. I mean, Bond and Clemens are not going to get into the 10th year, potentially, and I mean, that's a pretty big deal considering they were two of the greatest players of all time. So, I mean, I think they've been punished enough, um, but that's just my opinion. But So what we're going to do today is we're going to just go through all of the potential um, all the potential nominees out there because there are actual new additions to the ballot, Alex Rodriguez being one of them, and I have a very strong opinion on that, as David Ortiz as well. Let me just... I'm going to pull up the ballot right here just so I can just give out my opinion on everyone here. Um, again, it is a pretty loaded ballot this year. Um, and I, Again, one of my biggest issues with the Hall of Fame ballot, just so everyone knows, I mean, for a guy like Derek Jeter not to go in unanimously is an absolute disgrace, and the fact we don't know who did it is also kind of a disgrace. Um, my assumption is it's a Boston writer who just didn't want Jeter to go in. Probably a Jeter hater thinks he's overrated. Blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, again, just completely ridiculous. Okay. <sighs> Once you got the entire list here, let's just look at it. We have, okay. So, on his 10th year of the ballot, we have Kurt Schilling. And last year, he had 71.1% of the vote. Okay. So, this one's a pretty much a, a slam. I mean, just in terms of professionally, he is a slam dunk. He should be a slam dunk Hall of Famer. But it's not really his personal play that has kept him out of the Hall of Fame. It has been his, a lot of his, um, I'll be very generous and say his very controversial views on politics. Um, he said some pretty abhorrent stuff over the last several years that has really kept him out of the Hall. So it, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Like, should we reward someone who is spouting hate and misinformation into the Hall of Fame? Um 
it's tough because, he, again, his career numbers are fantastic. He has a war of almost 80, 216 and 146 career with a 346 career or ERA, and his postseason accolades don't even begin, or honestly outshine that. He is a world champion, three-time world champion, World Series MVP. I mean, the guy is clearly, a professionally at least, he is a stud and should be a Hall of Famer. But should he be in the Hall? Um, listen, it's that it's his tenth year. Um, I think that it's 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 really tough, and I can go either way with this. But tenth year, I think he Kurt Schilling should get in the hall, and honestly, I actually think he will get in the hall this year. But that's just my um, guess. But he's a Hall of Famer in my opinion. Um, so number two, we have Barry Bonds, also on his tenth year on the list. <sighs> I mean, again, this is just. <clears throat> To me, this is ridiculous. I think Barry Bond is a slam dunk Hall of Famer. The guy is arguably the greatest player in the history of the sport. Um, just Again, he did steroids, but so did an entire era of players. Whether or not you think that he should be in the Hall or, or whether he should be completely, his legacy should be completely tarnished because of his steroid use is up for debate. But the, but the fact that you're going to keep the greatest player in the history of the sport out of the Hall of Fame because of that, it, it kind of makes no sense because... He's clearly one of the most recognizable faces in the sport, and it's, it's silly to me. But again, I'm just going to go through it right now. As I said, his the first three guys there's on this list, their stats are really not up for debate, which is kind of silly considering it's the Hall of Fame. But his career stats, there's no debate. He has the highest war in the history of the sport, 162.7. That is, just so anyone knows, that is absolutely insane. That's completely insane. He had just below 3,000 hits. I mean, if he really, if he got over 3,000 hits, 3,000 hits, I don't really know how you, how you possibly keep him out. 762 home runs, the home run champion, and a career batting average of just under 300 at 298. <clears throat> Seven-time MVP, 14-time All-Star. Um, I mean, I, his accolades like don't even go. They go off the chart. Like you can't even. I mean, it's unbelievable. But the guy has. Some of his years also, like, I wasn't quite, I, again, Perry Bond was a little before my time, but even I was not fully aware of how just dominant this guy was. I mean, and another argument with Bond is he was probably a Hall of Famer before he even started juicing. With the Pirates, when he was skinny Bond, he was unbelievable. So he won an MVP before he turned to steroid use. I mean, again... His first year where he really turned it on with the power numbers was 1993. He had 46 homers and 123 ribbies. But, again, great play discipline, probably the best eye in the game. He had by far the most walk rate, the most walks in the league for almost an, almost an entire decade. I mean, some of his numbers are make-believe here. I mean, you have his on-base percentage in 2004 was over 600. I'm, so he's going on base over 61% of the time. I mean, that is just absolutely mind-boggling numbers. The guys had 70 home run seasons, and he did it consistently. He was a consistently monster player for well over a decade. Uh, I don't know how you keep him out of the Hall of Fame. The guy is clearly one of the—he is the most feared player in the entire sports history, in my opinion. In short, you can argue Babe Ruth— <clears throat> But, I mean, his Barry Bond is not up for debate here. This is a slam dunk for me. And do I think he's going to get in the hall? <clears throat> I actually think he does this year. And some would honestly be surprised by that because Bonds, I believe, was at 60% in two years ago. And, now, and he only went up like a percentage point this year. But I do think a lot of writers were resentful of Bonds. And I do think now that it's his final year in the ballot, they will finally come around and put him in the hall. Okay, so our next person on the list, we have Roger Clemens. Again, a very similar <clears throat> very similar case. T- also his 10th year on the ballot. Basically, same percentage amount, percentage point with Bond, 61.6% of the vote. His number is also not up for debate. I mean, 354, 184 career numbers for the 312 ERA. Um, seven-time Cy Young Award winner. Two-time Triple Crown Pitcher Award winner. He won an MVP as a pitcher, which is not easy to do. World champion, multi-world champion. I mean, the guy was... Uh, I'm going to make this one quick. Listen, clearly one of the greatest pitchers of all time. No question about it. And he's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer, there's no doubt. Him and Bond, same thing. I also believe Clemens gets in. So now we actually get to more interesting players who we're actually going to talk about their career accolades and stats. 
Um, Scott Rowland, again, he actually, honestly, I'm a little surprised that he has some of the percentage numbers that he does. <clears throat> he is a, again, it, it's difficult to, for me to understand some of these writers because, again, Scott Rowland got like 60% of the vote as well last year. A career, uh, 316 home runs, 280 batting average, seven time All Star. He was a Rookie of the Year winner, 20, 2006 World Series champion. He, this is a guy that belongs in the Hall of Very, very good to me. I, again, not a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame. And the fact that he's getting over 50% of the vote when Bonds and Clemens are in is a disgrace. Same thing with Pete Rose. Listen, Pete Rose is another guy. You can debate everything he did, and what he did was obviously horrible. You should not be gambling on the sport. Uh, betting, betting on your team is obviously also unacceptable. But let the voters decide. I mean, you look like absolute clowns when you do that. Uh, it's mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling. But, um, again, yeah. so our next guy, Omar Vizquel, and then, again, it's a tough one. To me, this guy is no chance to be a Hall of Famer, not even close. Um, Vizquel is a 49.1%. He's actually in a lot of sexual harassment scandals and assault issues when he was a member of the Cleveland Indians coaching staff, I believe. So that's going to be a big problem for him. And the thing with Vizquel is not really the best hitter, I mean, career-wise, ton of at-bats, uh, almost 11,000 at-bats, a career 46 war, which is not that great. He did almost have 3,000 hits. Again, good player, good player, only 80 career home runs and a 270 bat career batting average. Solid hitter, but cl clearly not Hall of Fame. And the reason if Fiskel did get in the Hall of Fame, the only reason would be because of his glove, which is one of the greatest in the entire sport. He was an unbelievable defender. And it's his fifth year on the ballot. I give him a shot to make it, but certainly not this year. Not for And based on his personal problems right now, I would say it's going to be a while before Mr. Vizquel has a chance. Another guy on the list we have, which is, let's go Billy Wagner. And again, I wish I, was, I had someone actually to talk to today about this, because this would be something where I would enjoy getting in debates with people about Billy Wagner. And again, it's, it's tough for me as a younger fan because I didn't see a lot of these guys play, so it's difficult. But um, and again, we'll get to the, to the first years in a bit with Bonds. I'm sorry, not Bonds with Rodriguez and Ortiz. Billy Wagner again, great pitcher. He was an unbelievable pitcher. Um, mostly he pitched for the Houston Astros, but he got around towards the end of his career. Then a career 30 WAR, 47-40, with a career ERA of 2.31. Okay, again, this is a debate. And it, again, it's really tough when you have relief pitchers because it's tough. And the guy has a career, let me just check it here, 422 saves. So the guy, in terms of relievers, is definitely one of the greatest in the sport. And there's really not that many consistently fantastic relievers out there. So just for that reason in general, again, he was consistently a fantastic closer. He had an ERA sub-3 for almost over a decade. I mean, the guy was just money. Career ERA of 2.31 for a reliever, that's very good, considering considering how difficult it is. That's why I always marvel with how incredible Aroldis Chapman has been for a consistently long period of time, because not many people can do that. Kenley Jansen, same thing. There's not that many guys out there that can do that. And because of that, I believe Billy Wagner is a Hall of Famer, and at some point probably will get in the Hall of Fame, but it would be toward the latter end. But if I had a ballot, he is on my ballot, no question about it just for the fact that there's not many relievers in the Hall of Fame that can do what he does. Um, another interesting person on this list, we'll go Todd Helton. This is his fourth year on the ballot, 45% of the vote last year. Um, again, uh, this is another guy. 2,500 career hits, career batting average of 320, but again, he did play in Colorado, which a lot of people hold against him, and... Listen, it's tough. I, I, I still don't know how to evaluate, how you evaluate guys from Colorado. That's another thing. Why should the Yankees get Trevor Story? I don't know because a lot of people think that his numbers are bumped up because of Colorado, which is totally a possibility. Career war is 62, though. His career stats, though, are really good. Solid defensive first baseman. Career, uh, 370 career home runs. The guy was a very good player, and that's really all I can say about him. He was a very good player, not a Hall of Famer. Next... Um, we'll go to Gary Sheffield. Again, I'm going to speed it up a little bit here. Gary Sheffield is eighth year on the ballot, 41%. Really good player, really solid player, but definitely not a Hall of Famer, and I think he won't, he won't make it. 
Uh, Andrew Jones, fifth year on the ballot, 34% on the ballot. I'm a little surprised the numbers are that low, honestly, because he's a stud. Ten, great, unbelievable defender, 10-time Gold Glove Award winner, 5-time All-Star, um, career war of 63. He had 434 career home runs, and he was, again, towards the end of his career, he kind of fell off a little bit. But early in his career, he was putting up big numbers, 30 home runs plus a year, um, on base percentage, well into the high threes. This guy is a case. I don't know if I put him on my ballot now, but perhaps towards the end, he's certainly someone I would consider. I would give him a decent chance to make the Hall of Fame, but probably not at this point. Um, Jeff Kent. <sighs> this one's a tough one, actually. I had a debate with someone about this the other day. Jeff Kent is a... Jeff Kent, again, not a good defender, so it's kind of tough. He's a second baseman, very tough to very tough to evaluate. Um, and he's kind of weird because he's probably one of the only guys that really flourished in his 30s. In his 20s, he really was not great. He really t- turned on in the second half of his career. He was unbelievable. He, his offensive statistics are really not to be debated. He's an unbelievable on offense. He just did not have the glove to back it up. But he... Again, I'm just going to pull it. Again, early in his career, he did not have it. But later in his career, he reminds me of like a Justin Turner kind of guy who really turned it on later in his career. And it's Justin Turner. Hall- and he does have an MVP, to his credit. He does have an MVP. But is Justin Turner really a Hall of Famer? No, I don't think. And I kind of look at him the way I look at Justin Turner. So I'm going to go with a no for Jeff Kent. So, again, um, now we'll just go through guys who probably are not going to make the Hall of Fame, but I'll quickly gloss over Manny Ramirez. Okay. <sighs> Manny's a tough one. Manny's a tough one. He's a sixth year on the ballot, um, 28% of the votes. He's probably not going to make it, but if I had a vote, I think he, I would give it to him. Listen, the guy's one of the most feared players in the entire sport for a generation. I think he's a stud. Yankee fans know that. And if I had a vote, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Andy Pettit. He got 13% of the ballot. He's might be no great player, solid player, not a Hall of Famer. Mark Burley, no thanks. Tory Hunter, no. Bobby Abreu, no thanks. Tim Hudson, definitely not. Why is this it's, again? Why are these guys on the ballot? Tim Hudson, come on. <clears throat> okay, now first years on the ballot. Um, we'll just go with the big two. We'll go with the big two. We're gonna go. Actually, you know what? Tim wants to give the guys. Want to gloss over quickly. Once again, was a stud for a few years, and if he could do that, if he did that for a couple more years, he'd have my vote. But he just didn't do it for a long enough time. But there's no doubt he was unbelievable. <clears throat> okay, so I want to get into the A Rod Ortiz debate. For whatever reason, I kind of feel like David Ortiz has a good chance of making it this year. Uh, from what I hear, a ton of people are voting for him, and he is no doubt his career accolades are fantastic. He's a career, and even the way he ended his career, I think strongly helped him, as did with A Rod. But the career 290 hitter, 550 home runs, 2,500 hits. But again, mostly a DH, did not, was not a great hitter. But do you want to hold that against him? That's the debate. I would say yes, but okay. But again, the guy is a is basically confirmed to have been doing steroids. His name was on a report that was not released at the time for steroid use. So come Ortiz, chances are he did steroids. So this is why it's kind of tough. Now, everyone's going to vote for Ortiz, but you're not going to vote for Bonds and Clemens. I mean, how do you decide? Like, why, how are you – like, there's no set of boundaries to decide upon, which I think is very silly and makes the Hall of Fame look like a complete joke. But, again, to be clear, I would vote for Ortiz, no question about it. He's a Hall of Famer. But the people who are voting for Ortiz over Rodriguez, I think, is a joke. You see, it is honestly unbelievable to me. Alex Rodriguez is also a case where he's one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. Ortiz was an unbelievable player, and he's going to be a Hall of Famer. And I think A-Rod will too, for the record, but I think it's going to take a few years for A-Rod. I mean, the guy is one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. Definitely better than Ortiz. A-Rod is a 14-time All-Star, World Series champion, three-time MVP. The guy's numbers are not to be debated. The guy had 700 career home runs, 296 career batting average. I mean, I'm just going to go through some of his best years right now. I'm just going to pick a few out. Early in his career with Seattle, he hit uh, 358 in 96. That's unbelievable. 358? Are you kidding me? I mean, you got to be joking. 50, led the league in doubles, 54 doubles, um, 36 home runs. Just an absolute stud. This was, this was young A-Rod. This is young A-Rod. This is when he was on the come-up. 
His first year was New York with the Yankees, which some say was his best year in the leagues. I'm sorry, that was not his first year, but I'm saying 2007 in general for him as a member of the Yankees was arguably his best year in the sport. I mean, I'm just going to go through this. This is, again, not debatable. The guy had 100 most runs scored in the league, 143, 54 home runs, 156 RBIs. Just make, make, make believe numbers. Make believe. Hit 314 with a 422 on base, 610 slugging. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how people leave. I don't know how you leave a rod out. And I will, to be honest with you, and some would say, okay, the reason why we go for Ortiz over a rod is because a rod was caught twice, and that is a hundred percent a true fact. But a rod totally, I think, turned it. He, I think, a rod's post post baseball world has totally helped him. He's totally rebranded his image. He looks so much better now. Um, I, I'm a, I, listen. I'm a big a rod guy. I think he's a great Yankee. He's a Hall of Famer. I don't know how you debate that. I, I, I seriously don't know how you debate that. The guy's a Hall of Famer. There's no doubt about it. He had a great end of his career, too. He really, I think, won back many Yankee fans and baseball fans alike. The guy is a great player. He's a Hall of Famer. But we'll totally be giving you updates on that vote when it comes in. And I just hope for the sport, the credibility of the Hall of Fame, that Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens are, in fact, in it this year. Okay, so I'll leave it at that for now. But one more thing I would like to talk about is the New York Yankees. I just want to gloss over them. Again, I've been thinking about them. What are we going to I, I generally don't know what resolutions the Yankees should have for 2022. There's so much to go about. Again, there's one story which I saw Barstool actually was doing a story on this where the Yankees were concerned about a minor league the, a minor league affiliate for the Yankees did a pizza rat. This is a thing that went viral a few years ago. They did a promotion on pizza rat, and the Yankees are apparently annoyed with the affiliate for doing that because it's not classy. Maybe they should be focusing on other stuff like making the team better than that. But that's just my opinion. So I just want to say, again, I just want to wish everyone a happy new year, and I will see you guys next week.